Tonight, new ways to report harassment on Twitter. What did Mark Zuckerberg have to say in his first AMA? And why does Uber want another billion in funding? They just got a billion. Tech News Tonight is next. This is, is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 211 for Friday, November 7th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by NatureBox. NatureBox ships great tasting snacks right to your door. Start snacking smarter with wholesome, delicious treats like peppery pistachios. To get your complimentary NatureBox sampler, visit naturebox.com slash twit. That's naturebox.com slash twit. Hello, everyone, and happy Friday. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into today's top stories. All right, so earlier this week, we told you about the crackdown of the dark website Silk Road 2 and Operation Animus yesterday. It appears that that was just the beginning. Today, the FBI, the Department of Homeland Security, and European police agency Europol announced the operation has led to the arrest of 17 people and seized hundreds of dark web domains associated with black market website. Along with Silk Road 2, drug markets Cloud9 and Hydra have been taken offline, plus busted contraband markets with names I've never heard of, like Blue Sky Topics, Flugs Vamp, Cannabis Road, and Black Market. Money laundering sites like Cash Machine, Cash Flow, Golden Nugget, and Fast Cash were also taken down. And agents have seized over $1 million in Bitcoin, $250,000 in cash, computers, drugs, gold, silver, even weapons. The number of tour hosted sites affected by the takedown, which are more than just a few, raises some questions about how anonymous the tour network actually is if law enforcement is able to infiltrate them. The nonprofit tour project, which maintains the tour network, says it doesn't have any more information on Operation Animus's techniques. Well, Twitter has teamed up with women's advocacy group Women, Action, and the Media, which goes by the name WAM, to review and escalate reports of harassment that are happening on Twitter, particularly towards women. WAM will manage incidents of abuse and reports what it deems credible to Twitter. The form uh, includes fields for reporting specific tweets, individual users, whether it's gender-based abuse, whether it's racist, sexual in nature, and if people feel threatened or fear for their safety. WAM says it'll aim for a resolution with Twitter within 24 hours of an incident being reported. The nonprofit, which pressured Facebook last year over the treatment of women on its network, says it approached Twitter and that the company was receptive. A Twitter spokesperson tells the Wall Street Journal that it works with many outside groups around the world on best practices for safety. AT&T is acquiring Mexican wireless provider Iusacell I-U-S-A-C-E-L-L, for $2.5 billion, which will expand AT&T's North American coverage, along with IUSA Cell's wireless properties, including licenses and network assets and retail stores and actually some debt, too, as well as approximately 8.6 million subscribers. Now, according to AT&T, IUSA network covers 70% of Mexico's approximately 120 million people and operates a 3G wireless network based on the global GSM or UMTS technology that's also used by AT&T in the U.S. AT&T is calling the deal, quote, the first ever North American mobile service area for U.S. customers calling or visiting Mexico and, of course, Mexican customers calling or visiting the United States. The deal is pending review by Mexico's telecom regulator, IFT, and the National Foreign Investments Commission in the country, and if all goes well, is expected to close during the first quarter of 2015. Yesterday, we mentioned that Mark Zuckerberg was conducting Facebook's version of kind of like a Reddit AMA, Ask Me Anything, where the Facebook public could, for the first time, directly ask the CEO questions about the company. Joining us for some of the better highlights is Roberto Baldwin, reporter over at The Next Web. Hello, Roberto. Welcome back. Hello. How are you doing? I'm doing really well. Uh, so, okay, let's talk about Zuckerberg's AMA as it's being described I wasn't really expecting him to spill the beans on too much. Hey, this is a public forum after all. But he, he did seem pretty forthcoming, you know, about, about, about some of the more popular questions. Of course, one of the most popular questions is, why did Facebook decide to force users, mobile users, to use the Facebook Messenger app as a standalone app uh, and unbundle it from the mobile version of Facebook? 
to this day, many of my high school friends are still under, uh, you know, the uh, assumption that this is a, a way for Facebook to like control their life. It, it, it has been unpopular in certain circles, right? So yeah. what did he have to say about that? Well, he really just kind of parroted what Facebook has said before about um, the, the the sort of unbundling of Messenger and the Facebook's uh, social feed. Um, is you know by unbundling them, they they both work better, according to to Facebook and Zuckerberg yesterday. You know they 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 both got a uh, they both got a, a boost in in speed. Uh, they both work better. Um, yeah, you know, and I I had been using the Messenger app way before they made us. You know, they made you use it. And I, you know, it, it, they using the the deep links. I mean, they just kind of go back and forth. So it's it's not the end of the world, but I, I still understand because now you have one other one other icon on your on your phone or on your your uh, your tablet, which is kind of a pain. Yeah, I mean, I definitely understand where you know, for somebody who's like, I don't have four hundred apps on my phone. I I only want the ones that 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 really provide me value. I don't want another app, or I don't like the idea of switching between Facebook and Messenger. I get that idea, but you know, if, if Facebook says, "Well, it just means that the services work faster," I mean, it's just, do you think that's sufficient or or even true? Um, I mean, if, if if an app only has to do one thing, I mean, that's in, and and it also allows them to update each app individually instead of having mm -hmm. to update, you know, the two different features within one app. You know, you you can update the the Messenger app and have it do what you, what you want that to do, and you can update the Newsfeed app and do what that that way you don't have those two. Uh, it's, you know, you end up with legacy code if you have the, uh, both those features crammed together. So, you know, whether or not it's true or not is, that's, you know, that's, that's between Facebook and, and Facebook and, and their PR department. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's, 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 you know, it's, it's, a, it's you know, if, if uh, more and more companies are kind of unbundling apps and trying to make these like, you know, one trick pony apps that, that, do, that do one thing and that's it. So it probably has more, more to do with. Other. You know, streamlining what the engineering team has to deal with than yeah. than anything else. You know, if you yeah. if you've got as many billions of people using Facebook as as Facebook does, then you figure at least the majority of them will just sort of deal with it. Although there is also the this is a pervasive question I think that happens with Facebook that that uh, as a social network to connect with people, it's it's lost its charm. There's information overload. We don't know how to say no to friending people that don't really provide any value in our lives. Did Zuckerberg address that at all, as, as, especially along the lines of Facebook wanting to continue to grow and, and reach everybody on Earth? You know, it's funny because his, his first reaction is like, well, I never, I never wanted to be, you know, I'm not cool and I never wanted to be cool. And which is, you know, that's, that's, that's kind of, at some point, all nerds kind of reach that point. <laughs> Um, right. But it, he, he kind of sees it more as just sort of a communication device. And, he, you know, and the, the way he was answering the question was Facebook is just is there when you need it. You don't have to be on there every day. Some people are. But it's there when you need it, when you want to be able to con contact your friends and, and get in contact with your family. Now, I don't know how, how you know, investors are going to be happy with, with hearing that sort of answer. I mean, you know, everyone wants growth. And, you know, they're, they're reaching out with, the, you know, internet.org. Which you know, ninety percent of that is yeah, that's that's very nice. It's you know, you're trying to get internet to everyone in the world, but you know, ten percent is like yeah, I want to get everyone in the world on the internet to get on Facebook. Uh, so you know, there's there's that sort of growth where you're you're you know you're you're helping people get on the internet who 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 can't, but you're really helping people get on Facebook. Yeah. So exactly. Yeah. So I, there's one of the popular. There. One of the popular questions was, hey, what do you think about that movie, The Social Network, which is not news really anymore, but yeah. obviously portrayed Zuckerberg as a complicated individual who didn't necessarily always have uh, the the casual user's interest in mind when when building Facebook. And I thought it was interesting how, how much Mark Zuckerberg says, listen, this is just not interesting stuff. The movie mm -hmm. got made and then there were creative licenses that were taken to make it more interesting. And actually some of that was kind of hurtful to me because it wasn't accurate. And I think that happens with a lot of movies, especially any sort of biopic is you, life is pretty boring for the most part. I mean, there's, there's nothing exciting about watching a guy sit at a computer coding all day, drinking, you know, Mountain Dew and then watching, you know, reruns of Seinfeld. That's not a fun, sh that's not a fun movie. No one cares about that. So you have to sort of, you know, amp it up for, for the sake of drama. 
Um, and so many movies are like based on a true story or, you know, this actually happened. And saying based on a true story means like three seconds of that movie could be true. And so, right. you know, it's uh, how much of the social network is true or not is, you know, up for debate. It's, you know, it's between Zuckerberg and, and the writer of the movie. But I, I, there's a there's some pretty, you know, wonderful things or outstanding, you know, elements of that movie, which you're like, ah, I've seen Mark Zuckerberg give presentations. And, and over the years, he's gotten much better at it. But mm -hmm. he is not that sad. You know, he's just not that suave. Well, something that Facebook is doing, and this uh, was some news that came out today, is that uh, we're going to get more options to control who we see and don't see on our news feeds. I, I recently actually started to unfollow people, which I, I realized was not unfriending them because the wording can be a little bit confusing. Yes. If I felt like, well, you know, they're just always kind of at the top of my news feed and, and this isn't someone who I want to, you know, sort of be front and center as far as my social graph goes. What do you think about the idea that Facebook says, we realize that you want more control over your newsfeed and you certainly don't want to be annoyed by anybody. So we're mm -hmm. going to give you these tools to sort of passive aggressively, not unfriend them, but just hide them. Is that just what social networks have to provide for all of us who have too many friends? I think so. And it's not just friends. It's, it's a lot of family. I mean, sometimes you want to be in contact with an aunt or an uncle or a cousin. Um, you want to be able to have that, you know, that contact with them. But you, you, sometimes they post things that you don't agree with. It, and it's a lot mm -hmm. of political stuff. You know, we, you know if, if, you're, if you're liberal, you'll always have that uncle who's posting things about the Tea Party. If you're a Tea Party, you'll always have that cousin who's posting about PETA. And, and you know, at some point, you're just like, I can't take this anymore. And no one has ever changed their political affiliation because of a Facebook feed. That's right. just never happened. You know, it, you know you're not going to talk anybody into it. So, you know, the, the sort of unfollow, giving people the chance to unfollow people without unfriending them is actually pretty helpful. Uh, it also does the same thing with groups and with pages. Uh, so, you know, I, I, I have a band, and so I get a lot of people to follow my band, but I'm sure a lot of those people are just following it because I made them follow it, and now they don't, they don't care when, you know, what we post on that site. So they, it gives them the option to, to sort of hide all the posts that I put up. I guess for the first time, I think, huh, Facebook probably waited until after this latest uh, U.S. election to, you know, so, so that we were sort of at the peak of our annoyance of whoever, you know, doesn't agree with us than to offer this sort of feature. So everyone says, great, thank you. It's exactly mm -hmm. what I wanted. Too many noisy people on Facebook. Yeah, well, you know, they saw the trending topics on there. Um, That's so, true. you know, the, the, the election was, was trending pretty high during, you know, and so it, it'll be interesting to see what happens at the, you know, the, the next election when, you know, you can sort of unfollow those people, what happens with those trending topics. I'm sure they'll probably still be the same, but, you know, you, you won't see as much if you're, you know, if you're kind of sick of, of hearing about, you know, candidates or topics that you just don't care about. Roberto Baldwin reports for The Next Web and is a frequent guest here on TN2. Thanks, Roberto. And before you go, Thank remind you. people where to keep up with you. Uh, you can find me on thenextweb.com and on Twitter. Like, my name is over here somewhere. Where is yeah. This? There it is. Strange, strange ways without the vowels. Yes. All right. Thanks, Roberto. Have a good weekend. Thank you too. Coming up, why Uber wants to raise another billion dollars after raising billions of dollars, or at least over a billion already, earlier this year. And the real reason that Google barges are not happening. Remember, when's the last time you heard about a Google barge? But first, before we get to all of that, we want to thank NatureBox for sponsoring this episode of Tech News Tonight. NatureBox is giving you some free food right now, a complimentary trial box of their most popular snacks. The box is, you know, it's a hefty box. There's a lot of snacks in there. All you need to do is pay $2 dollars for shipping. If you're not familiar with NatureBox, this is basically snacking at its best. We love snacking. You know, you, you're, you're, you're powering through the day. You, you've got, you've got, you're on a deadline. You're coding. You're, 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 you're working to make this episode of TN2 the best episode ever. Whatever it is you're doing, we all like to snack. But if you're eating a bunch of junk food, it's not good for you. It doesn't help you, you know, be smart or feel good or exercise the next morning. You want stuff that's good for you, like NatureBox snacks. Never any artificial flavors or colors or sweeteners in Nature Box snacks. No trans fats, those are terrible for you. No high fructose corn syrup, which is just hidden sugar that is gonna spike your system and then you, you know, then you have a crash and you feel worse than ever. In fact, if you're gluten-free or you're looking to, to, to have other dietary restrictions, 
Uh, Nature Box has you covered. In fact, they have hundreds of snacks, hundreds that have all sorts of different tastes and, and textures. I've pretty much had them all, although every once in a while I find something new in one of the Nature Boxes that we have around Twitter, which by the way, we absolutely love. Some people even steal certain snacks because they don't want me to get at them because they know how much I like them and they like them too, which is neither here nor there. What I'm saying is they are good. So in the afternoon when you're hungry, you want to grab some pumpkin cranberry crave from Nature Box or some Big Island pineapple. I know Leo likes that one. Or cinnamon spiced almonds. And they're better for you than the other snack options that you have. Start your trial today and get that complimentary sampler box. It's free, $2 shipping, naturebox.com slash twit. You want to stay full, you want to stay strong, and you want to start snacking smarter. So go to naturebox.com slash twit. And thanks to Nature Box for their support of Tech News tonight. Now on to some more stories that we're following today, starting with, all right, we don't always report on startup valuations here on TN2. There's there's too many of them and sometimes they're crazy, but with the sheer volume of this next valuation, we kind of couldn't help ourselves. Talking about Uber, car hailing service Uber is in early talks with investors about raising at least 1 billion additional dollars in new capital now, why this is interesting is it's less than six months after Uber raised $1.2 billion in funding. Now, this is to accelerate international expansion, and that's according to sources that are speaking with the Financial Times this afternoon. The company reportedly hopes to raise the money at a higher valuation than the $17 billion that it secured back in its Series D round, which was in June, which was very recently for that kind of money. It already made it back in June. That $17 billion valuation made Uber the highest valued private company in Silicon Valley. Now with the extra money, the company could expand further into Asia, Latin America, Eastern Europe, and Africa, places that there's still a lot of growth potential, as well as build out new transportation and logistics services after experiments that it's been conducting in New York with bicycle couriers and food delivery in Los Angeles. Uber currently operates in 45 countries and looking for world domination by the looks of this. Microsoft has announced the first phone sold under the Microsoft Lumia brand instead of the former Nokia Lumia brand that will come on November 11th. Right now, we don't have a lot of details besides that date. Microsoft isn't talking specs either, but Chinese site Tana recently leaked alleged specs for a five-inch lower-end smartphone called RM1080, 1090 rather. Other reports have pegged the new phone name to be the Lumia 525, Either way, we should know a lot more in less than a week. Asus has announced its Zen Watch, which will go on sale November 9th at Best Buy initially, with a later launch date on Google Play in the U.S., with a price point of $199. The Asus Android Wear device was first announced at Google's I.O. back in June. Finally, remember that whole offshore Google barge rumor thing? Google was going to have these showrooms that were technically over the water on barges. According to the documents that were recently obtained under the Freedom of Information Act, Google's plan to show off its technology in these special floating showrooms was scrapped last year when the barges used in the project were deemed unsafe by the U.S. Coast Guard. The barges first appeared in the latter half of 2013, about a year ago, one in San Francisco, one in Portland, Maine. A lot of speculation about what Google was doing, were they going to build things, were these going to be stores? A Google spokesperson confirmed last November that it was exploring using the barges as, quote, an interactive space where people could learn about new technology, like, you know, Google Glass and that sort of thing. Although the Wall Street Journal reports that at that point, the project had already been on hold for two months. Google was ordered to move its San Francisco barge in February of this year and then dismantled and sold the Portland barge for scrap in August. I don't know. We're just, we're just not ready for barges, apparently. <laughs> and that concludes this edition of Tech News Tonight. TGIF, everybody. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. Hope you do if you enjoy watching or listening to us. Write us at TN2 at twit.tv with any feedback. And we're live every day at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. If you can tune in to watch us. Make the sausage right in front of your very eyes. Of course, don't miss our morning news program, which is Tech News Today, tomorrow, not tomorrow, Monday. Tomorrow's Saturday. Come on, we're going to be sleeping in. Monday, starting Monday on every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane, and thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.